What's going on guys? So a video I've actually had requested quite a few times and it's one I've been meaning to do for a little while is kind of give you my 10 favorite Hugo Boss fragrances. Now this encomp encompasses multiple lines across the brand Hugo Boss, not just Boss Bottled, not just Boss The Scent, Hugo Man line and so on. A combination of a few. Now granted there's multiples from multiple lines in here because I like what I like. At the end of the day this is my 10 personal favorite of what I have because I do have more much more than 10 Hugo Boss fragrances, but I just narrowed it down to my 10 actual favorites that I tend to reach for the most, whether it's for certain situations or certain seasons. These are definitely my favorites. Let's talk about it. Stay tuned. Starting with one that's more situational for me, this is more evening wear type of stuff for me. Um, I do reach for this one on occasion when I go to dinner in the cooler weather. We're talking about Boss the Scent Absolute. This is a gorgeous fragrance. Really is. Very, very beautiful stuff. This has that signature Maninka fruit, but it comes across a little boozy. It's very warm. It's got a touch of spice. It's just Maninka, vetiver. And I don't really remember the other note, but you don't get the coffee that you get in Private Accord. This is a much more rich, warm, and boozy take on the original's DNA, which I do have the original, and the original's not featured here in this video. But this is a beautiful fragrance nonetheless. Performance is pretty stout without being a beast in evening situations. This is actually kind of a really good sweet spot for where the performance is, where it's pronounced, but not overbearing and overwhelming. It's not too strong but it does have a thickness and density to the aroma. It's very full-bodied and rich. Very lovely, very seductive stuff. That's why I like to wear it in the evenings, more so in the cooler weather. I think you can wear this one in the spring and summer nights as well, but I think it does its best work in fall and winter evenings. So starting things off, one of my favorites from Hugo Boss, Boss the Scent Absolute. Next is one that gets featured pretty often here on the channel when it comes to cheapies and fresh, mass appealing, Work for everything type of stuff. This is one of the best from the house. You can still find these at rack stores very cheap. They're still very affordable online. We're talking about Hugo Reversed in the Hugo Man line. It's that iconic canteen bottle. Hugo is printed backwards because it's called Hugo Reversed. So what makes this one kind of special is it's got that sparkly grapefruit top. Fruity fresh. Beautiful woody vetiver type of stuff. Fresh woody vetiver. Has a bit of a resemblance to Raja Parfum's Elysium Parfum Cologne. While not a dead ringer for it, definitely has the vibe of it. Some similarity in scent profile. Can definitely accomplish majority of what that one can do as far as wearing and, you know, the compliment factor. It's not the greatest performer, but it's in that average range, four, five, six hours, depending on your skin. But you can get this one really cheap, sub $30 price point. You're looking at 75 mLs. Uh, I paid 25 for this 75 ml at a Burlington. It smells incredible. There's never a bad time for this one. This one will get you some pretty good attention when people can smell it. Early in the, the fragrance's lifespan on your skin, it really jumps off the skin. It's bright. It's fizzy. It's fresh. It's juicy. It's just, it just smells so damn good. Like I said, I've harped on this one many times on the channel. Uh, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you've probably seen me feature this at least one time when it comes to cheap, fresh, compliment getting, or versatility, or in the heat. This is probably going to be in that video. Again, that's Hugo Reversed in the Hugo Man line. Next is another one that's a bit more situational, uh, though I do like to wear it casually. It can dress up very well, but it's one that I deem ideal for colder weather. Uh, so this time of year at the recording of this, we're in the middle of summer. It's not something I'm reaching for, but as far as Boss Bottled Oud, it's very hard to beat. This is a really, really good freaking fragrance. At the recording of this, Oud Saffron and Oud Aromatic are available from FragranceNet. They're definitely priced a bit higher after the 37% off coupon code. They're in the 60s and 70s dollar range. And I've been debating on it. I've been tossing around the idea of getting them. Because if they're even remotely as good as this one, then they're worth owning. I'd like to sample them first, but I'll probably end up just blind buying because this is, in its most simplest form 
of how to explain this, the most simple way. Take the original Boss bottle, add some synthetic oud, boom, here you go. Still has that warm apple pie smell, apple, cinnamon, woods, all the things that people have come to love about Boss Number 6. Plus this, like I said, it's very synthetic oud, nothing natural smelling about it. Does have that designer type of feel to it, um, but it smells really good. It just works for this fragrance. It's a great fragrance that doesn't get the kind of love it did when it first came out, and even so, the following year after it came out, the the love for it kind of died over. I killed over a little bit, I guess you could say, but it's one that I was late to the party on, but this is really good stuff. 50 ml of go a good ways, too. You don't really need more than four or five sprays. Performance is above average. Again, not a beast, but, you know, six plus into the eight-hour territory in longevity and pretty loud in the first hour and a half to two hours. Like I said, if you love Boss Bottled and you're interested in kind of dabbling into Oud, granted, this won't give you the full Oud experience like some of these niche fragrances will, but it's definitely something. It works, for sure. It works the way they compose this. It's Hugo Boss, Boss Bottled Oud from the Boss Bottled line. Next is one of the greatest cold weather designer fragrances ever created, in my personal opinion. I love it so much, I bought a big 200 milliliter bottle. I got a lifetime supply, basically. Um... I had tried a sample of it, fell in love. Ended up giving my buddy that I was working with at the time the rest of the sample. After one wearing, I was hooked. And I had found a great price from FragranceNet on a 200 ml. This was a few years ago. We're talking about Boss The Scent Private Accord. This is a gigantic 200 milliliter bottle. You can see the juice level dropping. I wear this one every winter. It's one of my favorite fragrances to wear in the winter. So good. One of my favorite coffee-based fragrances. There's that beautiful, sweet, slightly boozy Maninka fruit that is the signature of this line with some leather, a little bit of a dusty, dry leather, some chocolate that doesn't give it too much of a gourmand edge, but there is a little bit of a gourmand feel. Um, it's almost like a semi-sweet, kind of dark chocolate feel to it with this roasted coffee note. This sillage on this is magical. This is a spectacular fragrance. Above average performer, not a super crazy projector. It's pronounced in the first hour to two hours, don't get me wrong, but the sillage, the trail, out in the air, that is the magic of this fragrance. That's why I say it's one of the greatest ever made. This, for years, had some love. I think it came out in like 2018, I want to say. And up until about a year or so ago, you would see people talking about it in the cold weather. Uh, scent of the day post and such and I haven't this past winter I don't recall seeing a lot about it I only wore it a handful of times uh, this past winter but that's usually all I wear anyways because I'm so situational and I have so many fragrances but this is one that I know every winter especially out here in Colorado Springs I'm going to get the right setting and situation for this one uh, yes this is a great evening scent don't get me wrong but I actually think it's a great daytime scent in the cold weather as well it's super unique I've never smelled another fragrance like this. Like I said, it takes what's great about the original, adds this nice roasted coffee touch, gives it a little bit of a gourmand hit with a soft leather, and creates something special. Get your nose on this one if you haven't yet. I think it's it's hard to pick between this and Absolute, but I kind of lean towards this as my favorite in the line because it's the one I reach for the most. Boss the Scent Private Accord from the Boss the Scent line. Next, this is super underrated. Nobody really talks about this one. Um, it's very fresh, very aquatic, a little minty green, um, but more so about being watery and aquatic. Very light blue feel. Uh, the, color th the colored theme for this fragrance really suits the scent profile. We are talking about Hugo Now in the Hugo Man line. This is another one of those canteen fragrances. And what you see in this color scheme is what it smells like. It's got this almost blue cool otter pop type of smell to it. Almost not really blue raspberry, but... It kind of gives me that feel because there's a little minty, icy type of feel to it, that cooling effect, not as heavy as another fragrance in this video, but has a little bit of a cooling effect with this minty tone, but it's very watery and oceanic without being a salty sea breeze type of watery and oceanic, more of a freshwater type of smell, a little bit of citrus. It's nothing super deep and complex, but it just smells good. It smells really good. It's one of those great daytime, summertime fragrances. Spray this on, nice and refreshing. A little bit of a cooling effect, like I was saying, so it's just an ideal summer fragrance. It's cheap, sub-$30 price point, just like the others in the line. Um, 
and nobody really talks about it. This will be one of those fragrances that, while not super unique, you're not necessarily going to smell like everyone around you in the summertime. It's great to add to your wardrobe. If you're looking for something that's just a little bit different but not too out of the norm, you don't want to spend a lot of money, you might want to check this one out. It's super underrated. It's one of my favorites for sure from the Hugo Man line. It's Hugo Now. I featured this one recently in my favorite lavender fragrance video because I think it's underrated as a whole but especially as a lavender dominant scent profile. This is Boss Bottled Infinite. So this takes the original Boss Number 6 DNA, adds this beautiful olive tree note. It's got that oily, balsamic feel of an olive. Think olives. Woody tone to it, olive tree. A woody tone with this gorgeous dose of lavender at the top. You still get the apple cinnamon feel of the original. It still stays true to the original's DNA. It is in there, you will smell it, but it's not at the forefront. It's more of a supportive thing to tie the fragrance to the line. This is a, this is a flanker done right. Now, I don't know if Infinite's the best name, but the color of the juice is very fitting because it's a more rich and dark lavender heavy fragrance. That olive tree really adds some depth, some density, and a little bit of uniqueness to the lavender smell. Because like I said, it's got this balsamic, oily type of feel that really does smell like olives with this nice, slightly, I guess, moist wood type of feel. I know that sounds kind of strange, but if you smell it and spend some time with it, especially as it dries down, you can understand where I'm coming for it from a bit more. I did a full review on this one a few years ago. Um, it's one that I do go back to from time to time. I got to be in the mood for this specific scent profile because it's actually quite unique for what it is. Even though it does smell like Boss Bottled, it's a very unique take on Boss Bottled. And honestly, I think it's a, the, a better take on the original than the original even is, which is one of my all-time favorite fragrances from the 90s. But check this one out if you haven't yet, especially if you like lavender and you want a flanker that stays true to the DNA. Check out Boss Bottled Infinite from the Boss Bottled line. If Boss Bottled was a brand new fragrance... This would be the first one out the gate. I usually say that about the blue fragrance in the lineup. The, the most blue of the blue. That's definitely the case here as well. I've said that about Aqua de Gio Profondo. I've said that about Chrome Extreme. I've said that about Polo Deep Blue Parfum and so on. The bluest of the blue is the modern take. And Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum. Don't let this color scheme fool you. This is a blue fragrance. It's got a nice heavy dose of sage. There's cardamom here to give you your spice instead of cinnamon. It still has a little bit of a fruity apple feel to it. It still smells like Boss Bottled, but modern Boss Bottled. It does have a richness to it. That cardamom sweet spice really pops. A lot of cardamom and sage in the top of this fragrance. The sage here is going to give you a little bit of that a slight tone of the Eros feel, actually. I think it gives a little bit of a Versace Eros vibe. But just a touch. It doesn't have a heavy dose of vanilla or anything like that. Uh, but that's just how it comes across to me. Take Boss Bottled, add a little tone of maybe YSLY, just a small little pinch of YSLY because of the sage, ambergris, apple type of combo. You get a little bit of that feel, maybe a little touch of Eros. Um, I know that's a strange way to put it, but that's kind of how it comes across to me because it stays true to the DNA. I'll give him that. This does not smell like an Eau de Parfum version of Boss Number no. 6. This is not the richer, more dense version. We'll get to that. But uh, this is a modern take. They jumped on the Eau de Parfum flanker bandwagon that's been going on over the last two or three years in men's designer fragrances. And uh, it's not a bad fragrance by any means. I think this is a very good fragrance, and it's a great take for the modern man. If you like more modern style fragrances, more so than the 90s style, this is probably the boss bottled for you. This is definitely a great boss bottled for a younger man as well. And when I say younger man, I don't necessarily mean teenagers, though I do think they can absolutely pull this off. It has Because of the spices, it gives a little bit more of a mature vibe, but that blue feel, the sage, really grounds it and keeps it you know, relatively youthful. So it's not the most serious fragrance, but it's not the most juvenile and casual at the same time. It kind of rides that everyday wear type of train where it's very versatile and can do pretty much everything. Uh, not the best choice in the summer though, but spring, fall, winter. It, it works daytime, nighttime, dressed up, dressed down, doesn't matter. It's definitely one of the best in the line. Doesn't get any love. The Boss Bottled line, we're talking about Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum. Now this is much more minty green, fresh, cool you down than Hugo Now. Same line, we're talking about Hugo Iced. 
Now, the newer version is a different bottle than this. It's not in the can canteen-style bottle anymore, but it is the same scent as far as I know. It's in the bottle that Hugo... Uh, dark blue Hugo Energize that have that, you know, it looks almost like a martini mixer, shaker. Um, it looks like that style of bottle, the cap, the way it comes off and everything, like it's got the shot glass that goes to the top. That's the bottle and it's, it's in now. This is super, super minty fresh. A little bit of a toothpaste mintiness, I have to admit. So if you don't like that type of stuff, that synthetic mint, you won't like this one. But it's very easygoing, very pleasant. This is a super enjoyable fragrance. Great in the spring and summer. If you like green fragrances more for the spring like I do, I think this is ideal for the spring. But it definitely works just as well in the summer. And honestly, early fall when it's still pretty hot outside, this is a really good transitional fragrance to go from summer to fall. You know, because that's an actual thing, transitioning fragrances from season to season that kind of fall somewhere in between the two seasons. Because going from from winter to spring and then from summer to fall, that's a big transition, a big shift. You're going from very cold to getting into the heat, and you're going from getting into the heat to getting into the cold. So this is a great transitional fragrance. I know we don't discuss that a whole bunch here. I do make videos on occasion about that, but that's the main category I would put this in. Great for spring and summer, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of a three-season thing where it works for fall as well. Not one I would really want to wear in the cold in the winter, but hey, if you want something cooling that's going to give that mega fresh minty vibe, <laughs> This might be the one for you. Another one that's very underrated. I don't really hear anybody talk about. And the Hugo Man line is Hugo Iced. This has been one of my favorites. Underrated for years. Um, I have some childhood friends that have worn this for many years. I, when I go visit Louisiana, um, anytime I go to Brandon's house, if I use the bathroom because he keeps his fragrances in his bathroom, I'll usually do one quick spray on my hand just to smell it because I know the bottle's going to be there. With Boss Bottled Unlimited, this is a gigantic 200 milliliter bottle, that white ceramic look with the green lettering. This is beautiful. This is a nice aquatic hit from Violet Leaf. There's some mint that offers some minty freshness. Similar mint style to what's in Hugo Iced, but not as intense. A little bit of pineapple. There's a little bit of woods here. Doesn't have the iced pineapple feel that Summer Vibes 4.0 from Authenticity has. That's a different league of iced, frozen, minty pineapple. Whereas here, it's just a touch. It's more juicy and fresh than it is minty and icy. Even though it says frozen violet leaves um, or frosted violet leaves or something like that on the box for the official note breakdown from the, from the, uh, from the brand, it's nice. It's not complex. It's not a deep fragrance, as most of these are. It's not that deep of a fragrance. There's only a few notes. But it's very sporty, but not basic sporty. It's got a little bit more character to it. This is one that's super versatile. Obviously a great warm weather fragrance, but it's one that nobody really thinks of. Nobody thinks of this fragrance. Matter of fact, I want to spray it on my hand. It's such a good fragrance. <sighs> such a radiance to it. It smells great. This is one of those fragrances that smells great. Nobody gets, nobody talks about it. You can get 100 mLs for around 30 bucks. 100 mL testers, even a little bit cheaper sometimes. Big 200 mLs like this, around $40 and some change, maybe mid 40s at the most. And you can spray it heavy. Not a performance award winner, but it's, you know, average to slightly below average four to six hour range type of stuff for most people, kind of about five hours for me. I kind of fall right in the middle of that, and it's very enjoyable. This is one that's great casually and great for work. Not something I would want to wear to dinner, but I don't see why you couldn't if you, if you enjoy the scent and your significant other enjoys the scent. That's all that really matters. But very underrated, again, as most of these are. From the Boss Bottled line, this is Boss Bottled Unlimited. Last but not least, I believe this is discontinued. Um, this is the true Eau de Parfum flanker to the original scent profile. The new Boss Bottled Eau de Parfum is a name. Yes, it's an Eau de Parfum concentration, but the discontinued Boss Bottled Intense Eau de Parfum is the real deal. This is the real deal. This is Boss Number 6. Just more of it. Higher oil concentration. Much higher. Rich, robust. It's sweeter. It's pretty much the same scent profile, if I remember correctly. Just 
enhanced. They just increased the oil concentration. They did not change the formula as far as I know. And it's gorgeous. It's not as sharp and edgy as Boss Number no. 6. I find that's more of a, a dressier fragrance. Yes, it can be worn casually, but I've always liked to wear that with, I think, gray suit when I think Boss Number no. 6, which I do have a 200 ml of Boss Number no. 6. I know it's, I keep mentioning it, referencing and mentioning it, and it's not in this video because I wanted to feature this one because this is the ultimate version of that fragrance. There's no need to have Boss Number no. 6 if you have this because it's better. It's warmer, it's a little bit spicier, it's a little bit sweeter, and it performs way freaking better. Eight plus hours, easy. Eight hours is a minimum. Drier skin's gonna get seven or eight hours. It's not as cheap as it once was. You can still find bottles of this. Do not get the intense eau de toilette, get the intense eau de parfum. That is where your performance is gonna be because you're gonna have a similar scent profile. It is heightened with the intense eau de toilette, but the eau de parfum, you're going to get the longevity that most people were craving from the original after reformulation because the original used to last kind of like this one. Uh, but you know how it goes. If you're into this, reformulations happen over the years. When fragrances get longevity, and I mean like when I say longevity, I don't mean performance of the fragrance. I mean being on the market. When they're on the market for a long time, eventually these things happen. Rules and regulations change. You have to tweak formulas a little bit. And that happened several times, I'm sure, with Boss Number no. 6, which made a want and need for this. Unfortunately, discontinued, not $36. I think I paid for this, not $36 anymore. More in that $60, $70 range, I believe. But honestly, it's still worth it at that point because, like I said, this is the ultimate version of Boss Bottle. This is the one. If you're only going to get one, this is the one. Again, that's Boss Bottled line. Boss Bottled Intense Eau de Parfum. Well, that's my 10 favorite Hugo Boss fragrances. Uh, comes across from three lines, technically. I do have Boss Man Orange. I have some more from the Boss, uh, several more from the Boss Man line, several more from the Boss Bottled line, and so on. Um, it's just, that's my favorite lines from the house. Uh, I've yet to come across a fragrance I didn't like from any of the, the, the Boss Bottled line, the Hugo Man line, or the Boss The Scent line. Um, haven't tried Pure Accord, though. I've heard good and bad things. That could be the one miss in the Boss The Scent line for me. Who knows? But uh, if you get your hands on any of these, if you pick them up, you get a sample, you try them, you might see where I'm coming from with a lot of these. Uh, that's how I feel about them. That's the ones I reach for. These are my favorites. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. Uh, what's some of your favorites from Hugo Boss? It could be the numbered ones, the original Boss number one. Boss number five, Boss Selection. There's so many, so many Hugo Boss fragrances out there. It's a great designer level brand that a lot of these do get pretty cheap from discounters. And there's a lot of variety here. There really is a lot of variety. There's something to be found for everyone from Hugo Boss. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of my 10 favorites and you give them a spray now, I'm pretty confident you'll thank me later. Those are my 10 favorites. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.